so to what a lot of seekers, to myself included, know that we are on this planet right now. We go to sleep, not entirely sure what happens when we, when we go to sleep, and then we wake up and we, we, we realize that yeah, we, we are on this planet, I'm having a conversation with, with you right now. But we do ask ourselves, oh, how did this existence start? How did this all begin? And then secondly, well, why am I on this planet right now? And thirdly, how does it all end, if it even does end? From a TPT perspective, how did this all begin? Why are we on this planet right now? And, and what is the journey that we are currently on? Where does this journey end, if it does end at all? So one could say, if you find yourself in the middle of a dream, then surely the only purpose you could have is to wake up from the dream, isn't it? Mm. I mean, you wouldn't entertain the dream. Mm. The, 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 you wouldn't want to solve the dream. You wouldn't want to solve the problems of the dream. Sure. It's pointless. Mm. What? Why would you want to fix the mirage mm. in the desert? Mm. You would say, surely that was fun, but to get out of this mess, mm. I have to wake up. Yeah. And when I wake up, the dream is gone. Mm. And none of it's important. It was just an expression of creativity. Mm. Now one can I don't wake up. We can go deeper and deeper into this. Mm. But let's stay with your question. How do I wake up? from the dream. Well, this is the interesting thing. When we're sleeping at night and we're dreaming and we wake up, that dream world that we were just part of is displaced by what we perceive to be a world, a reality, that's fed to our mind through our senses, from the senses to the brain, from the brain to the mind, and the mind projects a world into your consciousness. Mm. So now your conscious mind is projecting a world into your consciousness. While you were sleeping, yeah. the unconscious mind was projecting a world into your consciousness. Same consciousness, mm. different source. Mm. And we take this world we perceive to be real. We, we take this world that we perceive to be the reality. The truth is that it's not. That in fact, that this world and what it means is determined by us. You determine through identification what you're aware of and what you're not aware of. You determine through opinion what each event means to you. Mm. It's not the intrinsic meaning of the world. It's your meaning you've attached to it. You say this is good, this is bad, this is good, this is bad. I've had a bit of bad luck. Mm. Well, I've had a bit of good luck. That's entirely your creation. So even this world that you perceive as reality is not the reality. It is the creation of your mind. It is the creation of your intellect. And you have feelings about it. So, the question then that one can ask is, 
can I wake up from the dream called life? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if this world of mine that I perceive right now, if you're telling me that this is not reality, this is not God's dream, I'm having a dream within God's dream. Mm -hmm. Then the first step is to wake up from my dream called life. For, for me to experience the dream of God, I have to wake up from my dream of life first. My, my consciousness has to be liberated from its identification with my identity, with being me. And so our school teaches Mahakala to enable this process. This awakening from your dream called life. We call it awakening of the soul. But this first step of awakening is not the ultimate awakening. Because even what we could call reality is also a dream. That's you know, like inception, it's dreams within dreams. So, but it's the beginning. That's all that's relevant right now. This awakening of the soul is a distant goal. Maybe a distant object. So in the beginning, when all of this was created, it's the consciousness of what we may call God, the cosmic entity, that divided into all the beings that we call souls. Mm. Just like when you dream tonight, your consciousness is pretending to be everything and everyone in the dream in the same fashion, in the same manner. The universal consciousness, the cosmic consciousness, is pretending to be our souls as separate things. It's not. Mm. It's really part of the cosmic consciousness. So, like the Big Bang, you know, in the beginning, you could say, there's this random fluctuation in the emptiness of space, which explodes a singularity that explodes into what we know as the universe. And in that explosion, that explosion signifies the moment when the universal consciousness divides into all the souls that become incarnated into the world as beings, as sentient beings. And then as they, so, so the act of creation, fast, in an instant, in a moment, in a millisecond, but the process of the reawakening of that consciousness and the merging of that consciousness back into the dreamer, the awakening of the dreamer is a long-term process of the enlightenment, the awakening of each individual soul until the tipping point is reached and we have a rush of awakening mm. of what we may call the consciousness of God mm. and the universe stops to ceases to exist in that moment and separation division ceases to exist in that moment and everything is once again united into one consciousness, into oneness, Taiyi, the great unity, into one. And God arises from his slumber, or her slumber. There is no, there is no gender at the level of consciousness. It's beyond duality. That is the best way conceptually that I can describe it.